Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the third episode of the Good People Show, brought to you by Adrenaline. My name is Ricardo. I am your host for this show. And of course, the purpose of this show is to highlight and bring some positivity to everyone during this challenging time. As the name suggests, it is the Good People Show. So every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m., we feature social entrepreneurs from all over Singapore and give them a, a, a platform to share with you their stories, uh, what they do, and how you can support them. One such example is Equal Dreams, the other way, sorry, Equal Dreams, who is doing our sign language interpretation. Uh, you can find out a little bit more about them at equaldreams.sg. So thank you very much, Nix, for doing that uh, for us. I also want to let you know that The Good People Show is a two-way show. Uh, we have a lucky draw uh, segment at the end and you can participate. All you need to do is ask a question uh, at any point in the show to our guest tonight. And of course, there's audience participation right at the end as well. If you've just joined us, this show is about 25 to 35 minutes long, depending on how the conversation goes. And we're going to jump into it right now. The social enterprise that we are featuring today is none other than Society Staples. They are run by two very young, dynamic entrepreneurs, Deborah and Ryan. I've known them for years. And they are part of our theme for the week, which is events, experiences, and entertainment. Now, Society Staples uses uh, team building, educational workshops, as well as training to facilitate social inclusion for persons with disabilities and the community. I tell you what, I'm going to bring Deborah online and have her tell us a little bit more about the work they do. Hi, Deborah. Hi, hello. Thanks for having me. Hi, Deborah. Thanks for coming. Thanks for joining us on the show. I also want to give a big shout out to everyone watching at home. I think about 45 people are tuning in. Hi, Ruth. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Clark. Hi, everyone. But most importantly, hi, Deborah. Deborah, how are you doing? Uh, I'm good. We are, I think, You're like good? the third week into circuit breaker <laughs> yeah so far it's been it's been quite it's been quite okay so so you guys obviously do a lot of team building workshops educational workshops training i imagine a large bulk of that were, was cancelled oh yes uh so everything started to be either cancelled or postponed from february onwards uh so i think as we saw the emails uh, of all the cancellations there was this uh anxiety that was growing and like oh you know how long is this gonna last and 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 you know can can our business actually survive this give me a sense of the cancellations was it um a hundred to like 50 or was it a hundred to like zero uh, I think for us, so our events are not really pre-book uh, months and months in advance. So for us, right. it was really more of a case of um, usually people book around two weeks to one month. That's kind of like the, the, the lead time that we work with. So from February onwards, uh, it was starting to get really, really uh, obvious and prominent to us that there were going to be absolutely no bookings because we had no requests uh, and usually... Right the march april season is actually one of our peak seasons i see because uh, is it is it like school holidays is it because at the beginning of the year there's a lot of extracurricular activities that sort of is that is that generally the reason yeah so school holidays is one because obviously you know there's the march holidays uh the second one was a lot of the um companies and the agencies that we work with all their year end uh closes around mm, uh, mm, you know the march mm. april period so that's when people want to like you know clear their budget and that's the best that's right. team building and all yeah but we just yeah. had completely zero requests yeah so what you're what you're saying is is this potentially hit at the absolute worst time because that was when uh, it, it almost is almost a peak for you guys yes so we have two peaks uh, so one is march april the other one is May, June, July. So right now, oh. both of our peaks are like completely yeah, smashed. Wow. Yes, the bulk and, of and, our and revenue how, is these two periods. And how did, how, 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 what was your greatest challenge? I'm sure there's an entire, you know, book of challenges, but, but what, 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 were your, what were your greatest challenges in the last few months? 
Uh, business survivability was definitely one. Uh, I, I'm in charge of the finance uh, at Society Staples, so I was just constantly logging into our bank accounts, looking at the amount, trying to calculate, you know, how many more months we have left. Wow. Uh, okay. I, I guess, okay. yeah, there was also the worry about the, the team because obviously working from home is, is a completely new concept for us. We have never tried it before. Um, yeah, so I was concerned about whether or not we had enough resilience uh, within the team to see us through, whether there's enough trust, because, you know, when you do everything online, uh, communication has to be very, very, very important. Uh, and some of the people in our team, are uh, they just recently joined us, they're interns. Uh, so there was mm, also that, mm. that concern about that area as well. Okay, uh, now, just, just before I cut back to Deborah, I just wanted to address everyone that's joining us. Thank you to almost 60 of you uh, watching us online. Remember to submit your questions for Deborah's, uh, Deborah at the comments below. Remember to like and share this video because of course this video is to spread positivity. So let more people know about The Good People Show so that we can spread the good people far and wide. So questions below. If you ask a question, you qualify for a lucky draw. I just want to let you know that Society Staples has kindly sponsored $600 worth of prizes despite the challenges that they're facing here on The Good People Show. So make sure you ask your questions on the comments below. Uh, Deborah, back to you. Um, so you, you mentioned a little bit about the finances, the cash flow, how many months uh, you have left. That was uh, something that kept you awake. Um, at, a, at a personal level, I mean, obviously, that's the business, the hard part of it, the dollars and cents. At a personal level, what tucked at your heartstrings? What were some things that you were worried about? I was very worried about uh, the community that we serve. So that's people yep. with disabilities. Uh, I would also consider myself quite plugged into other vulnerable communities. So I was worried about how the whole loss of income is going to you know, impact um, truly vulnerable families like low income, for instance. Uh, I was also uh, very concerned when I saw all these articles popping up about panic buying, about hoarding and, you know, xenophobia as well. And I was just thinking, um, what are some of the narratives that were going through these people's hate uh, while they were doing these actions? And I felt that the way, generally, I think the way that social media has responded to these uh, situations were not very kind as well. So there was this question mm -hmm. about how do we begin to build a society that's a bit more compassionate and understanding? Yeah, I mean, uh, you are very plugged in uh, to to many different communities, right? I know, I know, you're you're very plugged into the deaf community because you do that dragon boating uh, work with them, um, the special needs community because you do a lot of experiential workshops. Uh, give us a, a flavor of of some of the the feelings on the ground. Uh, so before the circuit breaker measures were announced. Uh, there were already a couple of caregivers that texted me and said, hey, Deborah, it looks like we are heading towards uh, either full work from home or uh, mandatory home-based learning. And, as, uh, and you know, these are some of the challenges that I see. Uh, I've spoken to my other friends who are in similar uh, situations as me. Um, and I think when I saw that, uh, one of the very, very immediate concerns that caregivers had was really the need for suitable inclusive activities so that they can engage their child with disability uh, so when the circuit breaker measures were announced uh, immediately i knew you know uh, society staples has the capacity to do this uh, this is something that we are experienced in and i was like i was just telling my team like you know we have to jump right into this uh, we have to help and support the community in whatever way possible absolutely right i mean i i found that you guys were, were almost one of the first movers in terms of uh, responding, and 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 y'all didn't respond uh, in 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 a in a in a business kind of way in a sense because your know, your 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 workshops your 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 team building all of that were were cancelled. But what you did was you gathered a lot of community resources very quickly, and and put it together. Tell us a little bit more about that, please. Yeah, so now actually on hindsight, uh, if I were to wear the entrepreneur's hat, right, I would actually yeah. think, oh, so you did all this without even thinking about money when like money should be your top concern. There you go. There you go. And that's why this is the good people show, right? Because, you know, you just did what was right. Tell us, tell us more. Tell us more. Yeah, um, so once the measures were announced, uh, you know, we, we immediately reached out. Uh, so I remember that was the 3rd of April, if I'm not wrong. 
um mm-hmm. and uh so yeah so we you know we use facebook we use whatsapp uh, we gathered all this data and uh in the middle of the night i was just sorting through the data uh immediately the next day uh around 9 a.m i jump on a call with ryan who is my co-founder and i said okay look you know this is how i group the data uh there are four very apparent uh, needs uh, that have surfaced mm-hmm. up uh, i think mm-hmm. this is what we can do um and then you know 12 o'clock uh we released the details on our facebook uh, receive overwhelming response. Uh, and then after that, uh, I got to work uh, putting all these initiatives together and Ryan being the IT wizard, uh, he started building up the, the entire website. And and this website is sswithyou.com.sg, yes. is that right? Or .sg? Correct, that's right. Okay. sswithyou.com.sg, and, and you... yeah. And, and if you go there, you will find not one, not two, not three, but a multitude of different initiatives that helps the community you can donate to buy a meal uh for for uh, uh the the less fortunate there are i tell you what, i'll let deborah tell you a bit more deborah tell, tell us a bit more <laughs> about all the things on that website i visited it just now and it just blew my mind thank you thank you so much for your uh, kind comments uh yes, so one of the things that has been uh very well received by the community uh is our fun at home activities so we have okay, a couple of home. program, mm. yeah. So we have a couple of uh program vendors. Uh, most of them are actually social enterprises too. Uh, it's like you All know right. supporting each other during this period. Uh, right. so they conduct uh online inclusive activities for people with disabilities. Um, so you can check out the calendar over there. Another uh very well received initiative is uh this thing called the Good Food for Community, where okay. we supply Hala certified uh freshly cooked meals to underserved uh, communities during this period. And none of this is for profit. None of this is it's just something that you're doing for the community. No, so far there's no profit at all, <laughs> which now when I think <laughs> about it, it's like, oh my God, what happened to my entrepreneurial streak? No, I, I, I think uh, we, we're just all doing what we can to spread a bit of joy, spread a bit of positivity during this period, right? Now, I mean, yeah. your, your heart, I, I, every, every time we spoke, I, I was always very inspired by by what drew, what dr- drives you, and 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 the very pure kind of pure hearted work that Society Staples does. Take us back a little bit, uh, and tell us why you and Ryan started something like Society Staples. But just before you tell us that, I need more questions at the comments below because there's a question and answer segment coming your way in just a few minutes time and currently i only have one question which is from peter thank you peter for your question but i need more questions below please like and share please comment uh, uh please comment with your questions below uh, you qualify for a lucky draw with your questions okay deborah tell us take us back tell us why you and ryan found so much purpose doing this um so actually the origins of society staples really started from ryan uh he saw this uh, online article where a group of special needs teachers uh were making some unkind remarks uh about their students uh, and it appeared on storm so that's where he actually saw that that facebook uh post and i think when he saw that uh he just felt you know something is very wrong uh we uh, and both of us have siblings with uh, disabilities. So I think on, in his opinion, it was like, hey, you know, if uh, teachers are meant to be nurturing, uh, teachers are meant to be uh, supportive of, of these students, but yet, you know, why are they making comments like that? Uh, and uh, the whole idea was, you know, let's use uh, dragon boating, which is a sport that both of us love um, to, you know, train people with disabilities so that they can use that as a platform to show that they are not any uh, less than us. And that was how the, the entire story started. Okay. And and in and, and Society Stables has been around, what, four years? Three Five. years? I want to say three, four. Five, Five years. years now. Yes. Wow. 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 And and is, is it fair to say that, that COVID is probably the largest, biggest challenge you guys have faced so far? As an organization, for sure. Okay. Okay. So, but personally, you, you, you find that maybe you have overcome some bigger challenges as we went along uh, in the last five years? Oh, yeah. Personally, so many. Uh... Ah, okay. Okay. Now <laughs> we're getting to the meat of it. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Tell, tell, tell me a story. Well, I, 
I just never saw myself as a leader, uh, as an mm. entrepreneur. Uh, I always found these labels very scary. Uh, it's something that I cannot connect and identify with. Uh, and yet, you know, the work that I do just puts me right smack in the center. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. I, yeah, so, so it's, it's just, I mean, even right now, like after five years, it's just something that I, I cannot reconcile with, uh, I never saw myself as a, as a good leader. Uh, I think I am so far away from that. Uh, I really don't like, uh, to, you know, manage people, uh, I would very much just rather be alone, uh, just thinking <laughs> through my own ideas, surfacing them to like a boss. Uh, I never want to be in the limelight. So, so, so yeah, so I, I think all this, all these experiences, like we have been very, very blessed and privileged to, you know, have so much uh, platforms, platforms like this, uh, platforms like the media to share our story, to share the work that we are doing. But these are things that actually put a lot of uh, stress and anxiety <laughs> on me. So, so, so yeah, it's, it's just something that I just cannot grapple with. For for what it's worth, for what it's worth, every time I see society staples featured, every time I see the growth that you guys have enjoyed, uh, it it, it warms my heart. I, I'm very happy that you know from where you guys were to where you guys are uh, right now, there is very clear growth, uh, both for you as a leader and the organization. Now, talk to me about your. I I know. I, I hope Ryan is watching. Ryan, hi. I hope you're watching. Yes, you he is be watching. watching. <laughs> Uh, uh, tell us, you know, you and Ryan have always struck me as incredibly different people, uh, and and because of that, it works. Tell us, tell us more. Uh, yeah, it is this very funny um working relationship. So I'm obviously the talkative one, which is also why I'm on this <laughs> show and not Ryan. Uh, yeah. So um, we should feature Ryan, Ryan, you know, just for kicks. Next yes, time right. Ryan, correct. You should, ready. yeah, completely, <laughs> totally, yeah, all, I'm fully supportive right. of that. All right, yeah. tell us so, more. um, mm. so, so Ryan is, uh, brilliant. I mean, his mind just operates at like such a brilliant speed in terms of generating, uh, ideas. Uh, the ideas are always very fresh. You know, he's the, he's the one that, uh, actually thinks about what are all these like cool and exciting things society staples can do. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm the worry what. So when he tells okay. me all these big ideas, immediately I will go like, oh my god, oh my god, like, you know, uh, how are we going to do this? How much money we need? You know, what are the things we need? Blah, blah, blah. So, uh, all right. yeah, I will always say that Ryan's like the brain of society staples and I'm essentially the hands and legs that tries to piece together uh, 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 all these things. Yeah, but all the ideas Beautiful. are all generated from him. Yeah. And, and do you then, because of that, have big fights and, and disagreements? You know, you want to create a bit of drama, you know, sometimes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like all the time uh all right so, all right uh, all right yeah so so we have definitely learned to uh work very much 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 better uh uh, uh mm -hmm. you know in, in mm -hmm. this partnership but i think at the beginning uh to him was to to him the perspective of always why are you constantly shooting down my ideas and to sure. me i was like sure. because your idea is in one sentence and like there are so many areas that you have not even thought about uh yeah so so that was be that was always a very common uh tension that we had uh right now it's, it's a lot better i think you know we, we can see from each other's perspective more we understand where each other are coming from uh right. but, but yeah i think our personalities are just so different that uh even when it comes to let's say like managing the team or you know the kind of culture we want to build as society staples uh that that still you know create some sort of a fight and argument uh environment no, I, I, I think the fact that you, you have contrasting personalities, actually, generally speaking, serves an organization well, right? Because you're balanced each other off. Now, um, the questions are coming fast and furious. Thank you very much, everyone, for your questions. Remember to continue your questions. Comments below. Let's get into questions as we pivot this conversation more towards the future and what Society Staples uh, is intending to do. So, uh, Director, we have some Q&A animation, right? Do we? No, director, not ready. Never mind. Oh, <laughs> ah, there you go. Ah, oh, Q&A yes, animation. Nice. Yeah. Okay, nice. Yeah, so whatever, uh, everyone that asks a question, I just want to say again, everyone that asks a question, you qualify for our little lucky draw at the end of it where you get to win a possibility of four prizes. Uh, three of them are sponsored by Society Staples. One is sponsored by Adrenaline. Let's get to questions, everyone. 
Okay, um, I think a lot of the questions are, are future looking. And uh, Kel Chu, for example, as well as uh, Shanti is asking, how, what are your plans going forward, right? Is it a recovery plan? Is it, uh, you know, is it a, you know, try and bring in whatever income at all costs plan? Once we emerge from this CB and further out as we emerge from COVID, do you guys have anything concrete that you you you, you want to do? Uh, wow, I think I, I don't actually have clear and straight answers for this. So I think the sure. whole situation sure. is so uncertain. And, you know, even though we planned previously, it's like every two weeks our plans change. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I think everything that you've mentioned, right? So whether is it trying to do business recovery, whether is it just trying to get uh, any sort of income that we are able to, uh, we are definitely activating everything and putting all hands on deck. Uh, so, so, so yeah, I, I hope that our team building um, sales will start to increase uh, once the whole sure. city breaker measures are lifted. Um, and yeah, we are definitely ex working on some very, very exciting uh, projects. Um, so we hope to develop community-based uh, trails to allow people sure. to understand, um, you know, different parts of Singapore better and also who are the communities that actually live in these areas. Uh, we want to create a more robust uh, training curriculum uh, so that more people can learn uh, how to be inclusive. Fantastic. I mean, I, I love that you guys are very nimble. Right, you you whatever the situation calls for, you would you would feel the need. Right? I've seen you guys do uh, everything from dragon boating to to causes to 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 inclusive education, and now with the new website. So I, I'm I'm fairly certain Brian or yourself will come up with something very creative to do once uh, the situation gets a bit better. Uh, Priscilla is also yeah. online. Uh, so thank thank you, Sandy, for the question about what's your next plan as well. I think that has been addressed. Uh, Priscilla is also by. Thank you, Priscilla. Uh, what keeps you going, Deborah, after all these years? What keeps you going? Uh, this is always a question that you know people ask, and uh, I believe my answers always change depending on the mood that I'm feeling that day. Uh, all right, all right. Well, I I think what really keeps me going is so if I were to say that. Um, because I have invested so much and that is actually part of the reason why I don't want to stop is not true that would be a lie so I mm -hmm. I have finally you know recognized and, and accepted that part but I think the larger picture is I still see myself in a position where I'm able to create the change that I want uh, to see or at the very least help facilitate that change um, mm -hmm. and, and yeah I have always also said that you know, um, as long as I have an opportunity to keep doing that, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a co-founder status, uh, it can really be, you know, anything. As long as I'm able to contribute, I think that's where uh, I'm truly aligned uh, with my passion uh, as well as what I, I, I want to achieve in life. So Society Status is currently a great platform for me to be able to, to, to do so. And I think that's where uh, it, it makes me very happy and the work is very fulfilling. So I want to touch on that. Um, I, I, you know, the work you do is fulfilling and fairly influential, right? I mean, your voice is getting heard in the media. Uh, the work that you do is for the necessary communities, the important communities uh, among us. Uh, there is a question from Qi Ting, uh, Xiao Qi Ting, um, and, and this is a slightly broader question. Um, what kind of initiatives do you hope to see uh, from public policies uh, towards the growth of social enterprises or, for that matter, uh, any of those communities that you serve here in Singapore? Do you feel like there, there might be some uh, improvement in terms of public policies that, that can help support the growth of the sector or these communities? Wow, this is a very tough question. Public it is, policies. right? It is, I, I, yeah. I hesitated to ask, but, <laughs> but do, you, do you wish that there was more support here and there? Yeah, of course, uh, for, for sure. I think I think social enterprises have always been in this very tricky kind of spot or area because um, by ourselves, we are considered like an industry, but yet each mm -hmm. of us are also connected to um, other industries based on what our social enterprises are doing, right? So for instance, like society staples as well as adrenaline, we obviously belong uh, 
uh, to the events industry. Then there are many, you know, F&B, social enterprises, so on and so forth. So I think it would be nice if um, definitely there can be, we can gain more recognition, uh, but yet also, you know, with the thought that um, social enterprises to me, first and foremost, have to be for profit. So I think it's a bit of a chicken and egg thing because while I want more support to come in for social enterprises, I also recognize that um, I don't really want us to be treated as like a very special, unique sort of mm. entity mm. because we should we still be, be integrated with the feet. whole... Exactly. Yeah, we need to integrate yeah. with the larger ecosystem. Yep, yep, yeah. Yep. Uh, Pete, Peter, one of our fellow social enterprises, hello, Peter from MPEG uh, is, is uh, online and, and he asked the question very early on. In fact, he was the first person to ask the question, so I think I must address his question. Uh, he said, did you have any light bulb moments uh, during this, this period? Was there any realization you had when you were addressing all the challenges during this period? Any, any light bulbs went off? Any particular uh, moment you can remember? during the crisis? Oh, for, for, for sure. Uh, the light bulb moments that I had uh, was definitely when we were doing SS with you. Uh, so mm. even though, you know, we are known to be quite nimble and we work pretty fast, I think uh, SS with you was essentially created in four days. Mm, mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was super <laughs> fast. From when I saw your first social media post, to when the event, when the website went live, it was like, snap, yeah, amazing. Yeah, amazing. yeah. so I think, Please. I think you know, in, in that four days, uh, it really just struck me that, wow, um, we actually have the ability to uh, put something together so quickly. Uh, we have such strong support from the community. When I reach out to our partners, right, so many of them were just, uh, they just willingly said, yeah, sign me on, you know, I, I'm going to support you. Just just tell me what uh, what, what you need me to do. And I think that, sure. that was really a light bulb moment to to just recognize that this cannot be achieved um, in, in one day, right? So whatever that you see happening now, it was all the years and years of work uh, that we have put in in terms of building relationship, in terms of doing the work uh, for the whole last five years uh, to be able to get mm. to where we are today. Yeah. Exactly. So, so actually, you know, and, and this is great advice, right? That that not every piece of work needs to be for dollars and cents, right? It, it could just be having coffee. It could just be having a chat, and one day the dots would connect. And and I think that's a that's a great business lesson uh, to learn as well. Now, a lot of people online are asking about your staff. Um, are you doing anything particularly special to sort of keep them engaged, uh, uh, take care of their welfare? You know, Adrenaline, we really love the people that work in Adrenaline. Yes, guys, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, uh, but the, 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 the people at Society Staples, are you guys doing anything to so keep morale up? Yeah, so our team is uh, still very small. Currently, we have uh, six people, uh, three, sure. you know, three interns, one part-time, and then myself and Ryan. Uh, I think one of the more unique or cool things that we have done is uh, we actually get uh, the entire team to journal. So mm. from oh. the start of, uh, yeah, so from the start oh, of uh, Circuit Breaker, mm. yeah, the interns created like this uh, Google Docs. Uh, every day there will be around one to three uh, questions that will be posted up. Uh, the questions used to come from myself and Ryan. Uh, right now, I have essentially mm -hmm. said, you know, uh, you have done this for like the last two weeks. It's your turn to go and like create your own questions, right? Uh, <laughs> Ask them uh, yeah, to do their so work, so right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, make sure that they are learning, right, from the last two weeks. Uh, I think yes. this is a really nice way just to understand each other better because sometimes, you know, when you do like your team or group uh, Skype calls or Zoom calls, uh, it may not be very easy to talk about emotions or, you know, the, the work needs to start going. So everybody's like on full on work mode. Uh, so I think the journaling is one way to first and foremost connect with yourself individually, but also at the same time, allow the team uh, to understand where you are, what are some of the challenges that you might be facing at this current moment. Um, and then, you know, through there, uh, uh, I do a lot of commenting uh, of, on the journal. So, so that also allows me to help uh, push my, my team uh, in terms of their personal development a little bit more. Okay, I have uh, a, a former colleague, Ross, who asked the question. Hi, Ross. 
Hope you're doing all right. Um, and and, and she, she asked a little bit of a downbeat question, but I think we can take that and then we, we make it a little bit more positive as we go yeah, along. She no said, um, uh, what, what is your most uh, regrettable moment, Deborah? Do you have, do you have any regrets? Uh, well, like, I, I, in life. I, 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 well, I suppose this is a society staple show, so it should be in the context okay. of society staple. But if you have a story to share with us, please feel free. Regrettable moment. Um, hmm. Maybe this is not so much. Okay, yeah, yeah. Actually, I would say it is quite a regrettable moment. Um, I think when we started Society Staples, our intent and desire was always to help make communities better. Um, and also, you know, help the stakeholders and the partners that we work with um, be able to do their work better, right, based on uh, what we have been doing. So we have always received uh, feedback and comments about, you know, oh, the things you're doing are so exciting. Uh, uh, I wish I could do that too. Um, and I would, I, I know that they mean that as a compliment, uh, but to me, I would always see it as, as a downer because uh, I think the way that I perceive or receive that feedback is, oh, I just made myself more of a inspirational idol sort of status, mm. Uh, mm. but I did mm. not actually make you feel that what we are doing is possible. Uh, and, I, and, I, and I really, really wish that we extended that help and that support uh, much, much earlier so that you know, whatever work that we're doing, uh, people can learn from it. Uh, you know, if people want to copy it, really, by all means, go ahead. Because the, the mm. idea was never to retain all of this uh, within ourselves. It was always to share it so that as a system, uh, we, we can improve. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that, right? So so what you're saying is that, that it was never about putting society staples on a, a podium, but the work behind it and the communities behind it that you really want to bring across to people and the, the, the impact that they can make. Thank you for that. Yes. Thank you for that. I thought that, that was very, very heartfelt. All right, let's, let's uh, move on to our final uh, few questions. Uh, one will be, are you thinking of taking some of these activities online? Let's say, you know, if you're in shutdown mode for like months and months. <laughs> I, I don't know. So I just, I think the moment you say that, it just popped into my head like, how am I going to do Dragon Boat online, right? Like, online. Like, everybody to, yeah, yeah, to like turn that on That was their, my first thought on my cameras. head as well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And then be like, okay, now imagine you're on waters, right? This is your paddle. Yeah. Close, okay, your, now let's paddle. close your eyes and pretend to paddle. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, I, I don't know. I think the at least for our team building, the, the nature mm. of the activities are really quite hard uh, to put it online but perhaps the educational programs that we do or even the, the trainings right that we were um, actually preparing for I think these really do have the potential to go online so that is definitely an area that uh, I'm discussing with Ryan and you know we are seeing what are the best possible options but also knowing that going online is actually not cheap right contrary mm, to what people mm. think you have to recreate you know, recreate everything yeah. exactly yeah. right exactly it's, right it's exactly right yeah. yeah 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 okay um and and what is the first thing you're gonna do when circuit breaker ends oh i want to eat hot pot i i ah. eat, like and love hot pot i see i see now with, i am a with ryan pot. <laughs> ah, okay, so so I, I'm I'm very particular about hot pot. Tell me which hot pot you're going to. Oh, I love Shabusai. Shout out to Shabusai. Oh. I love you. Please sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Meiren Kuo. I love Meiren Kuo. Please sponsor. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, we, we should do hot pot together. We should do hot pot together. Oh, yes, okay, please. now now. Yeah. And on that note, on that note, let's move to something, uh, the final part of today's show. It is uh, half an hour, so it flew by. Wonderful conversation. Yes. Uh, what, what, you, what you want to do right now is give away the prizes. I've got four prizes to give away. Um, how we're going to do this is first, Deborah, uh, I'm going to get you to do some drawing of your favorite okay. outdoor 
activity and I'm going to get my director to roll the animation. Here we go. Yep, it's, uh, uh, here are the prizes. We've got um, one $50 contribution. Uh, whoever wins this will make a contribution on your behalf to the sswithyou.sg. It's, uh, it's uh, good food for the community. And uh, the other three winners will win $200 off any uh, service that Society Stables provides uh, with a one-year validity period. All right, so four prizes to give away. Give away music and animation. Here we go. All right, Deborah, I'm going to bring you back. Yes. Okay. Deborah, show us your drawing. Everybody else comments uh, below as to what that drawing is. All comments qualify for the lucky draw. You don't have to be correct. Show us your drawing, Deborah. Ah, okay. <laughs> that's that's fairly straightforward. That's very straightforward. That's fairly yeah. straightforward. I was I was expecting you to draw the whole thing, twenty people inside, you know, dong dong chiang, dong dong chiang, but no, no, no that that's show, I am show that terrible program. at drawing. So like show that you know, I should show that I should make life yeah. easy for people. <laughs> this is Deborah's favorite outdoor activity. Comments below, all answers qualify. You have 30 seconds to do it. Uh, Colin Ong is not pedal. Hello, it's the activity. The activity. <laughs> not, not the thing. The activity. What is the activity? Not the item. Oh, goodness gracious. I think my instruction needs to be better. Huh? Okay. <laughs> no, you're very close. No, you're no, very no, close. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Teresa Hengs. Teresa Heng, another one that don't understand. Dragon boat pedal. Not the not the thing, the activity. Uh, anyway, these are all my ex colleagues, uh, so I can can can. Yeah. Ah, okay. okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. So so I I I need to give them a few seconds because Facebook obviously there's a little bit of lag. Um. All right. We're going to close first, uh, and then I'm going to have a chat with Deborah and give people some time. We're going to close in five, four, three, two, one. Answers closed. Admin, please uh, go and collate the names, please. All right? Go and collate the names. Now, uh, Deborah, if, I, if you had an opportunity to give a piece of advice to the people watching about, about social entrepreneurship, and whether it's starting a social enterprise, supporting a social enterprise, uh, what would you tell our audience here today? Wow. Um... I think one of the most impactful learnings that I've had throughout this journey was really about understanding yourself and the narratives uh, that you have uh, of everything, right, essentially. So whether it's, it is starting a social enterprise, right, uh, I think first and foremost, like people always talk about like follow your purpose, follow your passion. But I think to go one step deeper and ask yourself, actually, what is the narrative that I have uh, revolving around purpose and passion? Uh, mm. You know, and, mm. and, and what is it about this narrative that actually drives me to want to do the things that I want to do? Uh, I, I Yeah, that, that has been something that uh, I, I caught on uh, probably about a year or so. And I think it has worked really well for me. I'm a lot more self-aware right now. Uh, I'm able to... Uh, manage myself better uh, you know just generally I'm a lot more whole and and, and balanced uh, and I think this mm. is an advice that is not just applicable to social entrepreneurs or aspiring social entrepreneurs but uh, it's it's going to be a very helpful piece of advice for simply anyone right so don't just, just jump in blind but you must have a certain self-awareness must have a, a internal narrative about why you're doing what you are yes. doing okay okay yeah. uh, uh, Jul uh, Julius Axel asked uh, I think I need a few more minutes yes let me know if I need. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Julius Axel, uh, he asked uh, if you had any tips to keep mentally and physically uh, fit and balanced during this period. Uh, well, it, it depends on what your coping mechanism is. I think to keep physically fit, uh, what I have been doing 
uh, there are lots of like free fitness apps that have been you know going around right now uh i'm very kiasu la, so i downloaded like all of them and tried and shortlisted the ones that i really love and and you know uh worked for me uh, sure. uh yeah so so that's definitely one way uh i started to exercise with my family as well that has never happened before so you know this is uh, I think it's it's good to uh, pull in people that that you are living with to exercise together. Uh, if if that's uh, relevant to you, uh, in terms of keeping uh mentally you know fit, uh, so th the way each time I feel down, uh, talking to people really really helps. Uh, mm -hmm. and it's really just like blabber everything out that I have. Uh, so poor Ryan is usually the one that is taking on all my rents. Sure, uh, but, but sure, yeah, that, sure. that, that really, really helps me. I, I feel that that's like one of the most effective uh, things for me. Uh, but you really have to find something that, that works for yourself. Uh, uh, you know, there's this whole uh, phrase about uh, physically apart but still socially connected. Uh, I do think that that is very true. Uh, you know, our mm -hmm. fundamental need is always the need to belong, uh, you know, the, the need to connect with people. So uh, uh, reach out to friends, right? Uh, and of course, if things really escalate too uh, badly, uh, then there are always uh, mental health resources and support uh, that are available out there. So so yeah, there is there is no shame in, in, in seeking help if you truly need to. It's really, really very, very difficult times that we are in. Sure. I love what you said about physically apart but socially connected. Is that what is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, yes. and, and I think uh, that's exactly what the Good People Show hopes to achieve. Uh, essentially, it's really just a chit-chat between friends, but at the same time, we hope to be bringing some useful resources to the community. Now, my director tells me that the lucky draw is ready. Let's give up some prizes. Here we go. And the first prize that we're giving out is a $50 donation to um, uh, uh, SS with you. And the winner of that donation that we will give on your behalf is... Bing Singh. Congratulations, uh, Bing Singh. My admin, Shamin, will get in touch with you uh, and uh, let you know more about how uh, what the price is all about. Right? Uh, Bing Singh, we, uh, we have the donation to, to um, SS with you, SG, uh, but if you would like to donate to another charity, feel free to let us know as well. Okay, we've got three prizes proudly sponsored by Society Staples. It's $200 vouchers each. Let's go into the prizes. The first $200 voucher goes to... Congratulations! Don. Yeah, well done, Don. Congratulations. Thank you, Don. Let's spin it again for the second prize. Let's spin it again for the second prize. Got a couple of prizes. Here we go. And the second prize goes to... Congratulations, uh, Chua Li here. Well done. Well done. Congratulations. And last but not least, last but not least, last but not least, let's go straight away into the prize. And the winner goes to... Priscilla. Congratulations, Priscilla. You are a winner of a $200 Society Staple voucher. You can use it at uh, any time it is a one one year validity so my my admin charmaine will be in touch with all the winners to give you more details on how you can claim it we are almost at the end of the show i just want to say thank you to a few important groups of people first to deborah thank you very much deborah for being on the show thank you thank you so much for having me i had lots of fun yeah it was fun it was fun remember to follow society staples on facebook on instagram to keep up with the amazing work that they are doing. I want to say a big thank you to my team behind the scenes, as Deborah correctly said, putting up an online show of this quality does require an entire group of people. Uh, Charmaine, producer, Hui Yue and Bell doing the marketing, uh, Jamin behind the scenes as our director, thank you very much. Uh, and of course, I want to thank all of you at our peak today. We had almost 90 people watching us. So thank you for tuning in and your attention. I just want to tell you that Thursday, we have a special performance edition. This is the first time we're going to have performances on the Good People Show. And next Tuesday, we have managed to book Assistant Secretary General of NTUC and MP Patrick Tay to be on the Good People Show. It's going to be a very exciting couple of editions. So please join us for that. Thank you for your attention. Please stay safe, stay home. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.